Welcome to Derby winning trainer Graham Holland uh, for the latest update in terms of the Derby news. First of all, Wurzel, you pulled a bit of a snide one, Lenz and Bocco. Nobody saw that coming. I don't know who Wurzel is, Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, you pulled a bit yeah, of a snide one with Lenz and Bocco. <laughs> uh, look, um, Graham Box uh, sort of come up with the idea that he, he might like to race him again. And um, I was uh, not really sure, if you know what I mean, because obviously he was at stud making a few bitches and enjoying himself. And uh, but uh, he, he thought that, that, you know, after a certain amount of bitches mated, people would sit on the fence and just see how the pups were, mm. which is probably, probably plausible. Yeah. And I said, look, we'll, we'll give him a few gallops and just see how he works and one thing or another and that's what we've done and he started working very well when I was happy to take him I didn't really want to go there and do 30-50 and make it all a bit pointless so the dog's fairly well he's, he's shown some good work at home so uh, look um, we took him over and, uh, and let him have his chance if you know what I mean and uh, he's, a, he's, he's a type of dog that very really disappoints you, really, if you know what I mean. I, I know he didn't get no luck in Nottingham last year, but um, he wasn't breaking as well as he should be. And uh, the, the the work he's doing at home show, seems to be showing that he's 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 back uh, to breaking well and showing a bit of early pace and things like that. So we give him a trial, and, he, and he's come out of it very well. Surely you couldn't even respect him that that could though, could you? Look, I, I, I knew he'd go fairly well, be, all being well, you know what I mean? Um, he didn't pick up any niggles on the way round and everything like that. Um, I just, he, he's a really nice dog to train, he's very professional. Um, he does everything right. And uh, look, he was giving me the right signs at home that he'd go well. And I've got so much respect for the dog, I, I wouldn't want him to go around there and do 30, 50. And, everybody's wondering you know why you're doing that for so yeah I had a so, fair idea that he, he'd go well so was it night of stars you last raced yeah back in the, um yeah and he, he won the 575 there yeah yeah and did he i mean was he did he come off sound was he off lame or is it just literally you thought it was time for him to finish look uh he obviously won the derby as a young dog and he'd come back the next year, sort of aimed at the big competitions, and it didn't really happen for him. Um, he, got the, he got the Champion Stakes final, um, and he sort of half style, uh, changed his style of running a little bit. He wanted to be in, and uh, didn't, didn't, didn't quite get the right trap draws and things like that. Um, dead rail is on his outside and things. So it didn't really work for him. And I'm afraid in the Graham world, everybody looks at a dog's last race, not at what he won. Yeah. Uh, and they tend to um, make an opinion about the dog or he, or he wasn't as good as you think he was or whatever. Um, so the plan was for him to run Night of Stars and hopefully win and retire him. And everything went according to plan. Um, so that's what we've done. But, yeah. you know, Graham was quite right in one way. He's still quite a young dog. And he is what you call um, a natural athlete. Yeah. Um, he always looks physically very well. Um, he's just one of those dogs that um, keeps good body tone. Uh, very sensible dog. A nice dog to train. Though. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I mean, one of the things I think people have, have got out of touch with, I mean, long before our time in dogs, the when there was more money in prize money, then the old dogs would keep running. The, the quality dogs, that, and, and you go back in the history of the dogs, and the stars of the 1930s and the 1940s, they stayed in training, you know, till they were five five years old. I mean, likes of Mick the Miller and the local enterprise and those type of dogs. And because all the money became switched to breeding, I think people formed a bit of an opinion that they couldn't run after they were three because that was the big payday, wasn't it? After, if you'd won the derby, you went straight to stud and, and all the money was in the stud fees. And and we've perhaps forgotten yeah. because now you can now you can frozen semen, you can basically put the dog to stud 
and and bring him back afterwards and, and providing it that he's physically sound he's not going to lose that much condition you know not not too much in terms of overall form is he no look um a lot of my dogs that we've trained over the years have, have trained on very well into their four years old you know what i mean and um he's been very lucky he's never really picked up any serious injuries uh which obviously helps you know like if you pick up a serious injury you you might lose one or two lengths or things like that and uh we've been very lucky to train a lot of good dogs up until they're four and sort of probably after four four and a half they, they start losing their form a little bit a little bit of um pace now and such you know, like the Broad Acres Turbo was is good at four years, probably a better dog at four years old than he was at two and a half because mm. he was a very excitable dog. And by, by the time he got to four, he, he, instead of being a boy, he was a man, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got to ask you next question. How many is your Derby team? Don't, don't, Look, don't blag me because you kept, you, all throughout the winter you're going, oh, I don't know, it could be six or it could be ten or how many? I don't really know. Um, like it cha look, dogs change from week to week. You, you get one off colour, one gets functionalised, one one knocked up a toe. You, you know, like we'd like to think we'll have any anything we're between six and eight. Um, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't imagine be much more than that. You know, like we we're, we're taking a few dogs over for trial stakes next Tuesday. Uh, we've got two trialers and four runners. Um, just to just to let them have a look. Um, see if they suit the track, horses for courses and such. See, see if they how they get on travelling. There's a lot of bridges to cross, you know. Yeah. Um, but you'd like to think we'd have probably six, maybe eight. You know what I mean? With, with, with a few few improvers or or, or or dogs there just pleased to take part, you know. So at the at the moment, obviously, uh, the native dog ran very well in his heat at the track one the other the other night. He would be one of them. Who else, yeah. who, else, who else is on the shortlist? Well, probably new in session and, and native moisture are, are probably definitely um, there, if you know what I mean. Um, we're going to give Lentz and Bucker a race next Tuesday. Yeah. And hopefully he, he runs well. And you'd like to think he'd be there after the trial. You know, he's come out a bit OK. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a few maybes, you know, like the, the likes of Golden Tigers having a fight. Uh, for Ben Trial, he, he, he's had a couple of niggles. He's probably a little bit short of work, if you know what I mean. So that's why we give him the sprint. He's come out of that very well. I'd like to give him a, a solo round there now next Tuesday. And if he goes well, he'll probably be there. Huh. Um, the lugs of Kamiko, he, he's, he's a bit hit. He's, he fights the boxers a bit. Um, he's a good dog on the bunny. Um, but he's a bit of a clumsy dog when he gets behind. He tends to make the wrong decision. You know, like he's going for another trial stake. Um, we've got a nice little dog called Sweep the Yard, a uh, real genuine sort of a dog. Probably not a derby winner, but um, the, the owners are very sportsman like, they'd like him to have a trial. Yeah. Um, what else have we got for uh, trial stakes? I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, Gay Time Milo trialed fairly well. Um, he's come back from a, a, a few niggles, a couple of injuries. But yeah, again, um, he we put him in for a trial stake next week. He, he's quite a a very strong sort of five hundred meters. He's, he's a five seven five dog, really showable. Yeah, better pacey type of dog. Uh, I think he could go fairly well. Um, and there's obviously Romeo Magico. Um, Dave decided instead of going in the Podger Stakes that he'd like to have a crack at the English Derby with him. A little bit here. Um, inexperienced but got massive pace yeah mate um he's a dog that could go quite far in it uh it, he, like i say he's a bit inexperienced but his pace is there um and, and he's an improver you know he's a very young dog yeah was that uh, was it truly that he did the fast runs i'm trying to remember i've seen him fast he, runs he done a massive sprint as a pup qualifying in truly but he um he ran very well in the Conor and kirby yeah. Um, done some uh, real fast times around uh, Limerick. Um, yes. Like I say, he's, he's a little bit excitable at the start. He needs to get that sorted out a little bit. But um, 
a very pacey dog, a very fast dog. He, he's he's a low twenty eight dog, you know. It was him. Him and his little sister weren't they? They were both in it at the same time in the concrete. Yeah, yeah. Um, she she got knocked out in the semi final, semi final quarter final. But um, she she was she actually came in season the next stage. She totally missed the break and didn't really get into the race. So, um, a very fast bit. She's off at the moment in season. Hopefully, we will have a bit of fun with her later on in the year. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, as you say, she's still, still a little, little bit fluid in terms of that. 